Stroud second overall. The trade to get up to that third overall pick. Their 12th this year, a swap of first round picks. The 33rd pick this year, a second rounder. Their first round pick next year, not the Browns' first round pick, their first round pick. And then on top of that, a third round pick next year for that pick to take Will Anderson and a fourth round pick. Sean said something interesting just a moment ago that is something we're going to have to deal with in the near future. Was this a smart move? But I think for the next 24, 48, 72 hours, you are allowed to put that to the side if you were someone who loves this football team because, God, you've been down bad, right? We've all been there before. We've all been down bad. But from being down bad, all of a sudden, you end up having a wonderful night and get lucky in a big way. I mean, not one, but two. And while you technically had to pay for it, well, technically had to pay a lot for it, you should light up a cigarette and bask in the afterglow. It's fine to be super happy with what just happened, even though we all have no idea whether or not C.J. Stroud's going to be a good quarterback in the NFL and whether or not we know that Will Anderson will be a good pass rusher in the NFL. I I don't care about what's next. I don't care about tomorrow. I don't care about thinking this through and wondering if there's a future here. All I care about is that they did this, and I would have been happy with them taking any quarterback. I like that on top of getting a quarterback that they got a linchpin for their defense because it is wholly void. Were you going to be able to find that guy with the 12th overall pick? Debatable. Some would argue you could have taken uh, Lucas Van Ness, the defensive end out of Iowa. Others are going to argue you could have taken some of the other pass rushers out there. Maybe you sit around, you trade up later, not to three, but to seven to get Tyree Wilson instead of the Las Vegas Raiders. Tyree Wilson had some drip last night, but I'm looking at it from the right now. This ownership group needed to do something, and this isn't the best way to operate as an organization, but they had to do something to get people back in. And I would imagine for the most part, the average person listening right now who cares about the Houston Texans is intrigued, if not excited. I think you should be excited. I'll take intrigued. I think they'll take intrigued too. And I get it. This was a lot to trade up to that spot. And in the words of Grand Moff Tarkin before the Death Star blew up, this had better work. It better work. Wait, what? when did he say that? Grand Moff Tarkin said that right before the Death that Star descended upon Yavin 4. So Darth uh. Vader basically let Princess Leia, Han Solo, Luke Skywalker escaped because they knew that they were going to go to the Rebel base, and they put a tracking device on the Millennium Falcon, followed them to Yavin 4, and that's what Grand Moff Tarkin told Vader. This had better work. And then, and then the Guess Death Star did. blew up. It okay, didn't work. I, I don't love that. I don't love that imagery, but okay. Well, it's something you should have in the back of your mind, and who amongst us hasn't been nice down luck. bad and got lucky and then woke up the next day wondering, oh, uh, is this good? Is there a future here? Is there anything more to this? Do I want to leave before the other person wakes up? Is it time for me to call an Uber? Am I about to walk of shame my way out of here? Like, that could happen. I- I'm not acting like this is a definitively success, a definitive success for the team. We, we have no idea, and we're probably not going to know for two to three years. But... You got to be excited about it, right? You got a quarterback. C.J. Stroud, who, per many, is the best quarterback in this year's draft. Not a lot. Like, that's not the majority opinion. But pers- enough people. Stroud, six foot three, guy who played very well in big-time games, guy with a little bit of mobility as well. He has all the boxes checked off as far as things that you want in a quarterback. And this is a guy that we have seen play very well in the high stage. His last game against Georgia, it was not his fault that Georgia 
beat Ohio State. It was the idiot kicker's fault. C.J. Stroud set them up for the game-winning field goal with a scramble of about 30 yards. He had about 58 seconds to get Ohio State in field goal range. He got him in field goal range. He wasn't the reason they lost that game. And on the other side of things, you got Will Anderson, who has been dominant since a as, as a freshman. This was one of the first guys that Nick Saban let start as a linebacker, as a freshman. In fact, he was the first. So there's a lot of cool things about these guys. But you don't know how it's going to work out in the NFL. That's okay. You're allowed to be excited right now. They gave up a lot to make this move for Will Anderson. Nick Casario, at his post-draft press conference, said that the Texans had the ammo and the timing to make the trade up. Every year is different. Every draft is going to be different. You can't really project what's going to happen in 2024. So we talked about this before the draft. I think we put ourselves in a position. We created some optionality for ourselves. So if we felt there was an opportunity that we could take advantage of, then we were in a position to do it. And I would say the way kind of the chips fell, like that kind of happened to work itself out. I think that Nick Casario looks at draft picks the same way that I do. And not everybody shares this same opinion, but. I don't look at draft picks as soon-to-be actual assets. I look at draft picks as currency. I don't believe that having a first-round pick guarantees you a damn thing. You could end up drafting a guy who just ends up being like a three- to four-year starter for you that you don't even pick up the fifth-year option with. But there's a lot of people out there who really put a lot of value into first-round picks and second-round picks. Yeah. If you hit with those picks, it's great. But for the most part, teams across the league are not going to go anywhere close to 100%. So if you really like a guy, I feel like you should feel free to use that currency that you have to trade up and take a guy that you really like. Obviously, who knows what's going to happen with C.J. Stroud and with Will Anderson. But the Texans looked at the many draft picks that they have. They still have a first-round pick next year. They still have a second-round pick next year. And thought to themselves... You know what? We like this guy enough. Let's give up a couple of those picks. And look, that's, I guess, going to be the real question for the foreseeable future. Did they give up too much to trade up for Will Anderson? Casario says he doesn't think he gave up that much. You know, really, the trade in and of itself was just about doing what we felt was best for the team and the organization. Um, And I would say trades are always a product. They're a function of the player. And, you know, I would say just from our perspective, it's not about, like, what the points tell you on the chart. You know, if you have conviction about a player and you want a player and you think the trade is the right thing for you to do, then you go ahead and do it, you know, which is what we did. So I would say we're certainly not worried about, like, what the points are and what the trade chart says. The trade happened. They gave up a lot for it. The rest of this draft, they have two third-round picks, two fourth-round picks, a fifth, three-sixths, two sevenths, and next year – They have the Browns first, a second round pick, two fourth round picks, a fifth, two sixths, and three sevenths. I I think something you got to keep in mind. A draft is not one with what you do in the first and the second round. Having cheap talent, it's important. It's the best place to find talent. But what you do in the third round and the fourth round, I would say the amount of real players you find in that spot that's where a general manager and a team goes from being a uh, whatever they are to a real contender that's where you got to find guys and to his credit did Nick Casario not find a couple last year and we're talking second round of Jason but Damian Pierce Christian Harris Jalen Petrie those were very impressive picks the top picks were the ones that you're questioning Derek Stingley and Kenyon Green, and maybe it makes you question C.J. Stroud and Will Anderson as well. I realize they gave up a lot. I'm still excited they made the moves. I think you're allowed to be excited. I'm surprised by the negativity. (laughs) Check that. I'm not. I'm not surprised by the negativity on Twitch at all. A lot of you guys are just miserable people, and I I think that you need to just realize that sometimes you use draft picks to trade and get better draft picks. Doesn't mean it's going to be a home run every single time, which I'm sure you know. I obviously know. But to get hung up on the cost, I'm sorry. Like, spare me. I don't want to hear it today. Maybe a couple of years from now, I'll listen. If this was an absolute whiff, fine. 
But where was this ownership group? Where were they? Where was this team? Irrelevance. They had to do something. And I think it was in their best interest to do something that was a splash. And yes, they obviously like these players too. Do you see how excited they were in the draft room when they were able to get Anderson too? Like they're pumped about it. Who knows if that means anything? But I'm just looking at some of the responses that we're getting today. I'm, I don't really want to talk to you. 713-780-3776 to call into text in as well on the most interactive sports talk show in Houston. We've got Thomas, our friend in the Heights. Thomas, what's up? Uh, hey, what's up, Paul? Your conspiracy theory really triggered me. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, I was, I was like anti. If you're not going to get young, you don't believe in a quarterback, just draft, best available, fill out, build your foundation, trust in D'Amico, you know, like, you consider you have more time to work or whatever. But it did seem really odd and weird at the moment. And then, you know, give up a bunch for, you know, move up to take the guy that you are you know, speculated to take originally. I don't know. I, I mean, I understand the splash and the marketing or, or try to get the hype, but it's crazy that the, the ownership would listen to a fan base that wants to win this year when that's not a plausible thing. So mm-hmm. it's I, a you know, Thomas, so. though, I, I, I'm going to slightly push back on that characterization. I don't, I don't think it's them listening to the fan base. I think it's realizing where the fan base is now. They hadn't listened to the fan base for a while, and I do think that they are a lot more self-aware than they've been in years past because they are listening to a degree. But I think that this this isn't a listening to the fan base move as much as it's a trying to get the fan base to listen to you move. You're trying to win them back. And it's also not really a win-now move either. No, it's not. It's still drafting a 22-year-old and a 21-year-old, or however old these guys are. It's not... You know, going all in. It's not making the Russell Wilson trade. That's not what they did. Right. And, and by the way, speaking of Russell Wilson, this is not what's going to make and break them. You know, everyone, you focus on the first round picks. You guys remember the Rick Smith era, right? How many first round picks did they nail? Like, they were great at first round picks for a long time. Let's think about it JJ Watt, Whitney Merciless, DeAndre Hopkins, um, Jadevian Clowney. He was a good player. You can't argue against that. Kevin Johnson was not, but uh, you had Kareem Jackson as a first-round pick. I forget who they took in the first round in 2016 off the top of my head. Deshaun Watson in 2017. You had Dwayne Brown in 2009. Brian Cushing. Although, was Brian Cushing a second-round pick? You you had a really good track record of first-round picks. What did that lead to? It's about what you do in the third, fourth round. You got to hit. And and there's more pressure on Casario for today than there was yesterday. Texans draft Will Fuller in the uh, Will Fuller was a good pick in 16. He, he got hurt a lot, but, I mean, Fuller was a good pick. Rick Smith did a damn good job as general manager in the first round. But where did that get him? You got to find guys in the middle of the draft. And, and – Last year was a pretty good start for Casario, all things considered. The first year is kind of a wash. He barely had any picks to play with. This year, and specifically today, with those two third-round picks that they have, are they going to move up? Are they going to trade back? Today is where they got to hit some home runs if they're going to be anything different. You know, you go back to, to a team that I used to cover, but I'm familiar with the history of. The Seahawks in 2011 and 2012 did an incredible job of finding mid to late round talent. And that's how that team became so good overnight. Cam Chancellor, bargain bin. Richard Sherman, fifth round pick. Yeah, they got Earl Thomas early, but they found a bunch of guys late. That's how you win. And and I get it. Giving up a first round pick next year or a second round pick next year when you by the way still have a first and second round pick next year maybe not as high as you would ideally want you can't look at that as a complete mistake because yeah it hurts but you got to find guys today round two round three round four those are the most important rounds in the draft this is what Jeremy Branham had to say right before signing off the air and then going on Twitter and crying. I I applaud bravado. I applaud Kirk Courage. Do I like the trade? 
No. Do I think C.J. Stroud was the second-best quarterback? No. Do I, do I applaud them for being courageous and making this a relevant NFL organization? 100% yes, absolutely. I hope they're right and I'm wrong. They should be the ones that are right, and I should be the one that is wrong. So if they're right, I will look back at this in five years and say, wow, what a job by Casario. But if this fails... This might be the worst day in Houston, Texas oh, history, man, and this will this. live in infamy. No, don't say this. It's this is a Pearl Harbor. It's in play. <laughs> like the Pearl Harbor reference, everybody. Always, you know, foisting some World War II references on everybody. Some like Tony Soprano just watching World War II in color for the 18th time on Netflix. Worst day in Texas franchise history. No, it's the day Deshaun Watson asked out. And then followed by the day where... Deshaun Watson was found to have done a lot of sexual misconduct, allegedly, followed by the Letterman jacket game. Okay. I I was wondering what the first non-Deshaun Watson was. There's so many bad moments. The idea that trading up for number three to get Will Anderson after taking C.J. Stroud. I'm sorry. And He said it could. He said it could. Jeremy's entirely too confident in his opinion on Will Levis. No one should be this confident about any quarterback coming out of the draft. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. I like Bryce Young a lot. He's short. Doesn't have the strongest arm. I like C.J. Stroud conceptually. Size, arm strength, mobility. The S2 thing is a little bit alarming. Anthony Richardson can throw a ball and hit a ceiling. Can run faster than... Many wide receivers, but he's very raw, and he had a 55% completion percentage last year. Will Levis has been compared to guys like Josh Allen. Will Levis has been compared to guys like Carson Wentz. No one knows when it comes to quarterbacks. No one should be confident when it comes to quarterbacks. I'm sorry. I I, I don't buy into the idea either that anyone that's hosting a sports talk show where they are covering many subjects – is going to be a definitive expert in the draft unless they are literally, as a main profession, in the case of Lance Zerline, an actual scout. Sorry, just don't buy into the confidence. And I think the idea that giving up the 33rd pick and on top of that, a first-round pick next year, plus a third, to move up as being this absolutely cataclysmic event and way too expensive, a stupid splurge purchase, buying a car that... You're never going to drive, and you can't afford the insurance on. That's just not the case. They like Will Anderson a lot. They got Will Anderson. They like C.J. Stroud, it seems, of all the quarterbacks in this year's draft. They got C.J. Stroud. All that matters going forward is what they do in the third. These pick hoarder people, I do not like you. I just don't. You need to have as many picks as possible. It helps. It does help to have guys at cost control, but you have to find players. (laughs) And if you feel really good about a player— Go get him. Sorry, if if Matt Miller of wherever the hell he works now or some of these other NFL draft experts are like, oh, that's too much to trade up. Like, Who cares? Be confident. Operate with conviction. Who cares what these people think? If you like a guy, get him. As opposed to saying, well, I'm just going to sit here and patiently twiddle my thumbs hoping to get somebody. You know what happens when you do that? Go back to the draft where the Texans were about to take Tyler Lockett, the Seahawks traded up in front. And they got Tyler Lockett, and you ended up with Jalen Strong. Like These are things that can happen to you if you sit and you wait. They didn't sit and wait. They have sat and waited a lot in the past. They have. It's cost them. So, look, I'm not telling you to, to have faith in the Texans, but you should be excited, and you shouldn't be bitching and moaning about a couple of draft picks to move up in the draft. You shouldn't. I just don't understand it. I mean, right now, you have a tangible reason to actually care about this team. Temporarily, of course, we'll see what happens this coming year. You shouldn't expect them to compete, but that division isn't very good. You should be more excited going forward. And like the sense that I got from Jeremy, he's not. Uh, I saw Joel tweet essentially the same thing. There was too much to trade up. And okay, I- I'm-, I'm sure that noon to three, they'll have some interesting points as to why they're not a fan of the trade up. But I-, I-, I just do not for the life of me get it. I really do not. 713-780-3776 to call. To text on the HRNP listener line, you can tweet us as well. Akalon says, join us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ESPN 97.5. Mr. Brostash, I think, is a very adept 
breakdown of what happened on twitch.tv slash ESPN 97.5. On paper, it looks like they gave up a haul for Will Anderson Jr., but in reality, it was for Stroud. Stroud had to go number two to eliminate all the competition so that they wouldn't have as much teams coming for Anderson. It probably did drive the price down. A little, yeah. It probably, I mean, because you didn't have quarter or you didn't have teams trading up to number three to take C.J. Stroud. They would have been competing with teams that wanted to trade up to get Will Anderson, so the price would be lower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was a little bit lower. And and if you believe that you know Casario and D'Amico wanted Will Anderson, they didn't love the quarterback, and Cal said get a quarterback. Then you are, I they are they did just do the trade for the quarterback. They just flipped the picks, right? And, and, and here's the other thing, too. If if you got into that bidding war, the Colts supposedly liked C.J. Stroud. They supposedly liked him. So you blocked the Colts from getting the guy that they wanted. Uh, I, the, Richardson to the Colts seems like a shoot from the hip, Jim Irsay endorsed move. It does. Hell yeah. And I know that Chris Ballard's the one running the show there, but I feel like Anthony Richardson is a consolation prize for the Indianapolis Colts. I, I think that they wanted Stroud. And guess what? You blocked them from getting Stroud. Oh, no. At the press conference, they said that he was the number one guy on their board. What? You have to, <laughs> and that's the other thing, too. You they know, was, breaking down the press conferences loved, afterwards. They loved who they got. What are you talking about? Yeah. I, I Look, I like Richardson conceptually. Yeah. And and maybe that would have been the better pick. This is, this is the guy we're going to be comparing C.J. Stroud to for years. Not Bryce Young. To, to Richardson. We will. Here in Houston. Just like with Will Anderson, we will be comparing him to Lucas Van Ness with the Packers. We'll be comparing him to Tyree Wilson, uh, now with the Las Vegas Raiders. Tyree Wilson, by the way, the drip. <laughs> Ryan's got a thought. 713-780-3776. Ryan! Hey, what's going on, Polly? Yo. Hey, so two things. How many quarters of lights did Johnny G have last night? Uh, I'm going to say like five, but it was a subtle five. Five, he, he, he seemed a little lit on the radio, but it was okay. I, I Anyways, didn't sense it because that it, man it, can it, carry his liquor. And I, I, I resent you for saying that, Ryan. Don't say that about John's <laughs> liquor taking down ability. That man, right, that and, man uh, he's also, my idol. Can we, can we go ahead and say this is the start of uh, not embracing the suck anymore? Because I'm tired of sucking. I, I agree, Ryan. And, and, and no one should have ever embraced the suck. That is for the show after me, which, yes, I basically called them losers today. Embracing the suck is for losers. And, and it's funny, like, oh, but, oh they, they use all the draft picks that they got for Big Ben. Oh, no, they're, they're, they're paying, they're using them to get what they want. Uh, I want them to use it to get what I want. Like, I, I'm, I'm sorry. You could have Lucas Van Ness. Stop acting like you knew Lucas Van Ness was going to be good. Like, stop. Just stop with that. You, you, you don't know. You have no idea. Let them do what they're going to do. God, everyone's a draft expert now. Shut the bleep up. It's time to reject the suck. Yes, you never should have embraced the suck. I'm looking at uh, opposites for uh, embrace. Exclude the suck. You should punt the suck in the nads. That's what you should do. God. Stop the suck. Just, it's just embarrassing. Embarrassing that as a city we've come to this. 